develop your digital marketing strategy. So I talked about multi-channel. Multi-channel is something that I'm a very, very big fan of. And yes, creating your email list is super, super important because that is a that is a community of people that you control. You have more control over this. So I tell my clients, don't be a slave to the algorithm. Facebook can wake up one day and decide that the algorithm has totally changed. And then your entire business model has to be rejigged, right? So list building is a very important thing. And one of the ways that you can develop your email list is by giving away things for free. Do things like create something that's called a lead magnet. A lead magnet could be like a free checklist. It could be a guide. It could be a session like this, like a workshop or a webinar, a free product where people have to actually give you their contact information. And you put them into a list and then you start sending them regular communications. Okay. So the first step is to define your business goals. And is anybody familiar with SMART? That's SMART um, acronym, S-M-A-R-T, for defining business goals. So specific, super, super, super specific, measurable. The A stands for achievable. The R is relevant and the T is time bound. It's an excellent exercise to do. And I believe that you have uh, materials in your worksheets. The next step is to truly define your target audience, right? And this is an example of the of the um, the worksheet, but I think that you have that, right? And try and get as specific as possible. And also try and talk to the people around you to get feedback and see whether they understand what your goals are. Um, so your target audience has a lot to do with demographics. So things like age, gender, income, interest, location. Also think about what I said before about who is your ideal customer? What problems can you solve for them? What are their pain points and what keeps them up at night? Okay, the next um, um, step, <laughs> it's going a bit fast. <laughs> the next step is to actually implement your plan. So you start off with a goal. Um, which you use the SMART acronym to break down, right? Then you start to implement. And like I said, do something called backward planning. You start with your goal. Then you break down the big milestones that you need to accomplish your goal, right? So the first, let me give you an example, could be event planning. Your goal is what does success look like for you? Success is a well-attended event that goes off very, very smoothly, right? So in order for that to happen, what do you need? You need speakers, maybe, you need a venue, you need an agenda, and then you break down the tasks that you need to do underneath that. So back to our digital marketing um, strategy, right? And um, the landscape is diverse and it really depends on who your customers are. So it covers a range of different platforms, including social media. So that is either organic or paid, so paid or unpaid. And the social media platforms are super powerful. And, you know, there are now conversations after the Facebook outage about how whether these platforms should actually have as much power as they do <laughs> over our lives. TikTok is an amazing platform. One tip I'll give you for social media marketing is try as much as possible to use video. You don't always have to use video where you show because a lot of people are camera shy, but think about using video. There are lots of useful tools out there. Canva is one of them. A lot of people use it. Try it out. It will make your design process that much easier. There's also digital advertising. So what we call PPC, which is paid per click, um, and CPA advertising cost um, per action. So these are um, ads that you can run via um, either Facebook or Google. There are also other search um, engines that I'm even exploring now, such as Bing. Um, I don't know, I'm ex experimenting as well. I've also been told by other professionals that Twitter ads are actually an untapped um, segment as well. So look into those as well, right? Canva is everything. Yeah, I love Canva. <laughs> And then there's your website. Optimize your website as much as possible. Your website could just be one page. Kalada also shared some fantastic resources. So you don't have to be a web design guru. These platforms are very, very easy to use and they also have um, templates. Think about the journey and try and create a landing page that encourages people to interact and to click. Use a tool as well called Hotjar. Hotjar, I don't think it's free, but it's very useful because it gives you analysis about where people are clicking on your site and it gives you a good insight into human behavior, okay? Email marketing is everything, right? Email marketing is such an amazing um, resource. You can write emails to people to nurture their relation, your relationship with them, to convert them. So there are people that you would get into your funnel 
through maybe your lead magnet, you get their email address and send them valuable information, okay, and connect with them. Yes, it's called hot jar, hot jar. Um, so the next is also review sites. Reviews our sites are really important. This is what you call social proof. If you've interacted with any customer, make sure that they give you a review and a testimonial and put that on your website, send it out on email and put it on your social media, okay? Somebody says they've been living in a cave. No, Jane, Jane you're happy to be, I'm happy you're here. It's called Hot Jar, H-O-T-J-A-R. The next thing you need to do is make sure that you are tracking your performance, right? There is no point doing this work and not tracking results, right? You're running a business at the end of the day, okay? So what you need to do is figure out the different ways that you're going to track. Check your results and tweak and optimize as much as possible. So when you're running ads, check your clicks, check your locations. These are dynamic platforms, right? So you can go in every day if you want. There's something to be said about being slightly obsessive about the analytics. I come from a startup background. In startups, you check your numbers on a daily basis and you're almost always in what we call sprint mode, right? So I'm trying to hit a number of conversions and I um, am checking each day how many I got the day before, what works, what didn't, doesn't work, and optimizing my actions going forward. And the more you do that, the more you can test and figure out how you can optimize to a place where you find a sweet spot that works for you and your business. Okay. So different metrics, sorry, that last slide, different metrics that you can use to track. And this can be done on your organic content as well as your paid content. And it can be done across different platforms. They all have different names for their different metrics, okay? So one is impressions and reach. And impressions is the number of times people see your content. Reach is how many people actually saw your content, okay? Consideration, so how many people are visiting your website? How are you tracking those analytics? Are you using analytics, Google Analytics, um, on Wix, there's also got analytics of their own. And then how many leads are you generating from um, your, your traffic? So is somebody visiting your site? When they visit your site, what are they doing? Are they leaving information? Are they um, ask, asking to contact you? Are they buying your, your products and services? How many leads, and these are quality leads, and lead generation is one aspect of lead management. So you've got the generation side and then you've got the qualification side and then you then start to figure out who your customers are because not every lead is going to convert at the same time. That is a whole other workshop, <laughs> guys. Conversion, so sales revenue, you're running a business, how much money are you making? And this goes back to lead gen. If you're generating 5,000 leads a month, out of that 5,000, what percentage of them is likely to convert? How many of them are actually spending money with you? How many of them are worth your time? because your time is your most valuable resource. So you need to be very, very careful about how you're spending your time. For solopreneurs as well, for a lot of people, you're running your business by yourself. So how effect effectively are you, are you using your time, right? And cost per acquisition. So how much does it cost you to acquire that one customer? So if I'm spending a dollar on one customer, how much money am I making off of that customer? right? So it should not cost you $50 for a Facebook ad to convert one customer who's going to spend $10 with you. You know, it's just, you know, just do the maths and then you can figure that out. So there are different tools that you can use, such as Buzzsumo. Some people have also mentioned Facebook Ads Manager and Google Analytics. Um, so yes, track your acquisition costs. Um, it's very important. Rule of thumb for us, in like me, in my business and in my career has always been kind of like not trying to stress, not to spend more than a dollar per acquisition and just search yourself a benchmark that works for you and your business. 